Another piece of UI that we're constantly designing in Figma is your basic form component. They can also be one of the most frustrating components to work with because of the sheer amount of states that they can take throughout our designs. If it's not built correctly, forms can turn into a variant nightmare, or you'll find yourself detaching components constantly and losing your source of truth. So this lesson walks you through step-by-step step how to build a form component that is scalable and flexible. Let's dive in. First things first, let's define exactly what we mean when we say form. Because this up here is not a form, that's an input by itself. A form, in my opinion, is a subcomponent that is grouped with a label and other content in order to create something that is a little bit more robust than the individual subcomponent by itself. Because that subcomponent doesn't actually have to be an input. It could be a dropdown or a date picker or maybe even a text area. And so when I say creating a form, Specifically, one of the goals is that it should be able to take in any of these subcomponents and automatically work with all of the states associated with the form itself. And then the last big goal is we really want to minimize the size of our variance matrix. There are a lot of different ways to create robust form components. Some of them work really well and some of them work really well, but they require 10 times as much effort as we actually want to put in. So one of our goals is going to be to make this as lean as possible. Okay, so let's move over here and we're going to start where we always start. And that is with the smallest possible atoms. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to define a form content component. And that is just going to be what lives inside of those individual subcomponents. And you can have a variety of different states, but Something pretty simple I think that covers most of our use cases is we can have four different types here. Icon in front, icon in back, text only, and then an icon on both sides. And it's an important to note, make sure that you use your icon wrapper component here because it's pretty likely that you're going to have different form sizes for mobile and desktop and you might want to decrease the size of this icon and that way you'll get your variance drop down. And you can go in depth in the icon wrapper lesson if you haven't already. All right, now once I have my form content, I'm going to duplicate that and turn it into a base form child and the form child is going to be what populates my three different subcomponents here i have inputs selects and text areas and so how do we do that well let's look at our inputs first if we crack open our first variant here you'll see that each of these has the base form child within it and then for our variance matrix, I have state, which is defined here, and then size, which is as simple as small and large. And all I'm doing is restyling the base component moving across states. So for hover, I've simply increased the contrast of the border. For focus, I've brought it all the way up to white. And then on my filled state, I'm taking this form content component and changing it from text only to icon back. And that's what's gonna reveal my icon right here. And the same thing for my air state here. It's set to icon back, and then I'm able to override the icon and the border color to make it red. For large, all I'm doing is increasing the fixed height of this base component here, and again, it's going to work a lot easier if the height is determined at the base level and the wrapper is set to hug contents. That's going to give you a lot of flexibility. And if you start changing it up and making it so that this parent level is fixed height, it's going to create a lot of headaches down the road. So I really, really urge you to customize the height at the base level, set it to fixed height and then wrap it in hug contents. Okay, so 
For large, all I did was duplicate this set here, move to the base by hitting enter, and then bump up the height to 56. So that's pretty self-explanatory. For my select, you can kind of guess how this works. This is icon back. I filled out all of my states. And then for the text area, all I'm doing is coming into this base here. I bump up the size to 160, and then you have to make sure to change the alignment to top left versus center. And if we head to our base here, you can see that I actually have 16 pixels padding, even though this difference here isn't quite 16, it's actually only 12 pixels. But because I have this set to a fixed height, it allows me to crank up the height on a form area and have this nice 16 pixels of padding here around the edges. So now once we have all these form components created, it's actually kind of helpful to put these in a frame and I called the frame form components. And the reason is then when I'm inserting something like an input, I have a form components folder right here so I can really easily change between text area, input, and select. And then you can see the properties are available at this subcomponent level. So I can easily change from placeholder to air or to filled or focus. I can change the size and everything is going to work great. Okay, so then all I did was I took this input and I dropped it here, which eventually is gonna become my base form. And a little detail that's actually really important is we need to override the name from input to form child. And that way, when I swap this out for a text area or a select or something else, the name is going to say form child because it's already overridden. And that's going to allow my overrides to be preserved. Because what would happen if I left this as select and then changed it to an input, the name would swap and it would kill my overrides because Figma requires the names to be the same. So that's a small little detail. From there, the way that I built this is I have an auto layout up here that I just call top and an auto layout here called bottom. And I set the whole thing in an auto layout with zero pixel spacing. So I'm actually defining this padding here within the top and bottom auto layouts. So this has eight pixels and this has four pixels. And then obviously both of these top and bottom auto layouts are set to space between here. And it's important to set this label and the helper text to be fill container. And that way, if the helper text is really long, for instance, it'll go on to two lines instead of running into our character counter. So these are the four elements and maybe you'll have different elements around your form. I think this is pretty standard though, where you'll have a label, some kind of an optional piece of text that's probably gonna be used like a button. Uh, you can picture something like reset your password living here or something like that. And then we have our helper text, which we can use however we'd like, and then an optional character counter. And obviously this is a pretty aggressive form state. More likely than not, you're not gonna have all four of these showing, but we need the ability to do so. And so what I've done after creating my base component is I've simply outlined all of the potential states that allow me to hide and show those four elements there. And that gives me eight total states to worry about. And the nice thing then is I'm only defining these eight states within my form component. Whereas if I was defining air and placeholder and filled at the form level, I could have a matrix of a hundred plus inputs so fast, it would be quite aggressive. But instead, I wanna handle all of those states at the subcomponent level because it's gonna make my end matrix a fraction of what it could be otherwise. Cool, so this is it. Now, let's put it into practice here. If I insert a form, Let's bring up our menu and look, we have these nice little toggles and we can do anything we want with it. How easy is that? And then if we wanted to change to something like 
a text area, we could do so. And we could come back up to our form, add a button, add a character. Maybe we realize actually this is a select. We want to change the state to air. We could come up here. Maybe we hide our character counter for an air text. Perhaps maybe that is red. You get the idea. This is super flexible. We can create anything we could possibly want. And all we have to do is insert a form. Not only that, but if we realize down the road that we want a different type of subcomponent, or maybe we realize that we want a layout where this could have two different selects side by side, it would be so easy to create a new subcomponent and that would automatically be able to be populated within our form component without us having to do any other logic or variant creation around the actual button or character counter or description level. It's really, really nice because what we've done is basically separated where our state is held between the subcomponents and the top form. And when we do it that way, that's what gives us the flexibility to do anything we want at the subcomponent level. Once they're imported into the form, everything behaves in a uniform way. All right, let's make something with our new form component now. I'm gonna insert a form. We're gonna duplicate it a few times. I'll select all, throw it into an auto layout here, give it some space, some padding, border radius. We'll give it a fill color, some kind of a subtle border, and maybe I'll add a little bit of extra margin at the bottom, make it feel optically balanced. Okay, cool. So by default, this has included some selects, which is totally fine. Maybe I'll leave a select up there, and maybe I type full name here, and afterwards I realize, okay, this needs to be an input actually. This is why we renamed it form child because now I can come in here and change this to an input and everything worked great and it actually kept my overrides, which is amazing. All right, maybe this is a text area and I'll just leave it like that for now. Cool, and then I can very easily change this. I can add different states around the form itself. Maybe this has a character limit here and here we'll give some kind of description text. And you can see how quickly we were able to build that form. Everything's tied back to that single source of truth. It's all going to work really nicely in the future when you want to change things and add different components. They're going to be able to fit into this system that you built. And I promise this is going to be one of the most flexible and fun form components that you've ever worked with. Enjoy.